hi guys and welcome back to my channel crime time with me charlotte so first of all thank you so much for joining me here today to hear a true crime case so today's case happened here in the uk and it did have quite a bit of publicity but i'm sure there's a few of you out there who probably haven't heard about this case and after watching the documentary on this i was like i need to cover this case because it is just crazy so let's get into the case of Gemma Mitchell. On the 27th of June, 2021, a gruesome discovery was made by a woman who was walking her dog through the wooded area in Salcombe, Devon. The dog walker came across a badly decomposed body laying in the wooded area on the side of Bennett's Road. The dog walker obviously made a phone call to the police telling them that there was a body. The police were straight in attendance to go and investigate this scene. It was extremely rare in Devon for cases like this, murder, finding a body on the side of the road, was just extremely rare. Devon is like a picturesque tourist area. So crimes like this, it just, they just didn't happen in Devon. When investigators were examining this body that was found, they noticed that it, it didn't have a head. And upon further investigation, it looked like the head had been removed rather than it just being removed by animals. It looked like someone had physically removed this head because of how clean cut it was. Combing through this crime scene, the head was found close by to the body. On investigation of this body, they could tell that it was a woman with Asian background and was probably around middle aged. At the scene, they found a small handbag and obviously they hoped that it belonged to this body so they could determine the identity of this woman. And inside they did manage to find a ticket. I think it was a train ticket and it did have a name on it, and that name was Mi Kong Chong. She was also known by the name Deborah, and that's how I will refer to her throughout the rest of this case. When Devon police looked into Deborah on the police system, this is when they found that Deborah had actually been reported missing two weeks prior to her body being found, and the missing persons report came from her home in Wimberley, London, almost 200 miles from where Deborah's body was found. So obviously there was a lot of questions to how Deborah got to Devon. Deborah was a widow originally from Malaysia and had been living in London for 30 years. Deborah did have mental health issues where she was diagnosed with schizophrenia and still such services were involved in her care. And she was also taking medication to help with the schizophrenia. It was said that Deborah was also quite isolated and was vulnerable, but was described by her church friends as being sweet and almost of childlike nature. Deborah was very religious and attended church regularly. And this is where she felt most at home and where she found company with her friends. And this is where she met one of her close friends, Gemma Mitchell, who was 38 years old in the August of 2020. The two women were described as devoted Christians and that's what brought their friendship together. It was also said that Deborah believed that Gemma was curing her illness with spiritual healing. So who is Gemma Mitchell? So Gemma Mitchell was actually born in Australia. Her parents were originally from the UK, but her mother worked for the UK Foreign and Commonwealth Office whilst out in Australia. But they did make the move back to the UK when her parents split. So her sister and her mother returned back to the UK. In 2004, Gemma attended King's College in London which we know is a bloody good college, where she studied a human science degree. During her study, she learned to dissect the human body and another module covering experimental autonomy and graduated with a first class honours. After Gemma finished her studies, Gemma actually returned back to Australia. While she was out there, she met a guy who was very religious. So Gemma wasn't religious before until she met this boyfriend that relationship actually broke down and Gemma in 2015 moved back to the UK so she moved back in with her mother Hilary and her sister in northwest London so it's actually been reported that her and her sister actually had a turbulent relationship 
And when I was doing my research, I came across that actually Gemma's sister had a like a, a restraining order against her, which actually Gemma broke. The property that Gemma and Hillary were actually living in was owned by their family for several generations. I don't think their family were hard done by. I think they were quite wealthy. The property itself was worth four million pounds. It is in London. Probably if it was anywhere else, it would probably be worth a million, but <laughs> um, it was worth four million pounds. But it was in an absolute state of disrepair. It was reported that this house was an absolute hoarder's dream. It was like papers piled up everywhere, mess, just, yeah, just disgusting. The house was obviously, like I said, in disrepair and it needed a major upgrade. So Hillary said that Gemma had an idea of actually extending upwards. So it would be like a third floor and that would just be for Gemma. So in 2016, the works for this extra floor started and they had actually had two builders. One builder walked off the job. She said that they were scammers and the second builder walked off the job and another report from Hillary saying that they also were scammers. So that this job on the house was never finished they were left with half a roof and in a bad financial situation again doing my research i believe that these were not scammers i believe that these two builders actually walked off the job because of Gemma's behavior but you're probably thinking why are you telling me all this stuff about Gemma's house situation why are you telling me that it needed all this work and they were in bad financial situation well Trust me, it will all come very clear. So the Devon police, after discovering Deborah's body, worked with the Metropolitan Police in London to track down Deborah's killer. First thing, obviously, police wanted to do was to check the CCTV around where Deborah's body was found and also around her home in London. The one thing that stuck out to Devon police was on the 26th of June, the day before Deborah's body was found, a black 4x4, which we know now as a Volvo XC90, kept appearing on CCTV, just driving around and around the area and on Bennett's Road, where Deborah's body was found. They believed that this vehicle had something to do with, with Deborah, but they just couldn't see the registration of this vehicle. The CCTV in London picked up something really, really suspicious. A woman walking towards Deborah's house with a large blue suitcase. So when the police saw this, they thought, let's, let's keep an eye on this woman and follow her on CCTV. Several hours later, they could see the same woman again, but now with two suitcases, walking back in the same direction she came from. And as you can see from the CCTV, how heavy does one of those suitcases look? It's almost like she's stopping for a rest. And seeing this clip and knowing what we know, it literally makes my stomach turn. So the search was on to obviously find who this woman was and who was driving that black 4x4. They wanted to check Deborah's phone records and this is when they can see that her phone was actually used in Devon, close to where her body was found. There was a number that texted Deborah's phone the day that 4x4 was seen. So they called this woman and this is when the woman told the police a story that she was at the petrol station, uh, three miles away from this crime scene, when a black XC90 came into the forecourt with a blown tire. She flagged the woman down and told her, you've got a burst tire. And apparently the woman said that in this vehicle, said that she did not know that she even had a burst tire, which I find really, really hard to believe. The woman of the vehicle said she didn't know what to do because it was a hire car. So this lady kindly called the AA for her, a recovery service here in the UK. And because the AA had this lady's number, she said that she would text her when they give her an ETA, a time of arrival, to come and change her tire for her. She said that she was given two numbers and Deborah's number was the one she texted with the ETA. However, Deborah was not the one driving this car. In this vehicle was Gemma Mitchell. This is when police managed to obviously get the car's registration through the AA and they went to the hire car that confirmed that Gemma Mitchell did hire this car and was using Deborah's phone. So with this new evidence, police also looked into CCTV at Gemma's house after they think the murder of Deborah happened. What they noticed is that she didn't leave the house. 
the only time that she left the house after Deborah's murder is when she got this hire car. And we can see here Gemma loading this heavy suitcase into the back of this black 4x4 hire car. It was suspected that Gemma got the hire car, loaded it with a suitcase with Deborah's body inside, took the 200 mile drive to Devon and started just scouting the area. And this is when we see her on CCTV trying to find somewhere for Deborah's body to be dumped. And this is where she did it on Bennett's Road, a quiet, secluded road. And then we see Gemma driving back. She started then to make her way home and where she blew out a tyre. Something obviously she did not plan for. The one thing you don't want after you've just dumped the body by the side of the road in a wooded area is for your tyre to blow out. On the 6th of July 2021, Gemma Mitchell was arrested on suspicion of murder. The police felt that they had enough circumstantial evidence to arrest Gemma. On their arrest, you can see that Gemma is so calm, doesn't even ask really what she's being arrested for. It's almost like her brain is thinking, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what am I going to say? What's my story going to be? Hello there. Hello, how are you? Yeah, good. Uh, there's an answer. Sorry, what's oh, your name? I'm sorry, you're asleep. Are you Gemma? Yeah, I am. Okay, Gemma. Just give Gemma a second. Sure, sure. Come on, come on a second. Sorry, can I... Can I Gemma, do you want to come out? Yeah, sure, sure. Come on, right. just want to see them. Hand to show your hands. All right, Gemma, at this moment, I'm resting on suspicion of murder. OK, you don't have to say anything, but you may have a defence. Do you want to mention one question? Something which you later rely on court. Anything you do say, they be given evidence, OK? Once you're in your cuffs... Uh, I'll explain everything to you. Okay? Should I get some yeah, shoes then? If you want to one sec. Inside? Who's inside at the moment? Um, mother. Your mother? Yeah. Hey, okay. Is it? If you want to. Oh, someone lift that up. Yeah. Let's step back inside. Is anyone else inside? Just your mum? Yeah. yeah. There is someone else inside. No, no, no just, just your mum. Yeah. Alright, do you want to. Should I bring her or. Bring her in. Bring her in. Well, yeah. we're just going to come in for a sec, yeah. okay? Gemma was then obviously taken into police custody and during her interview, Gemma said no comment, no comment to every single question that the police asked. And the police even gave her the statement from the AA driver who went out to her and this is what he said. And they've said that the person driving the Volvo waited in the car all that time with the windows down and the front door open, the passenger door open, when it was literally chucking it down with rain and it was windy. Why is that, Gemma? No comment. The car stank, didn't it, Gemma? No comment. Stunk of a dead person. No comment. Stunk of Deborah's decomposing body. Is that right, Gemma? No comment. I don't you find that last no comment really sarcastic? No comment. You're being arrested for murder of your so-called friend and you're giving no comments like that. Just shows her mentality. Whilst Gemma was obviously in police custody, the house was searched from top to bottom and her mum, was Hillary, was removed from the house so they could conduct this search. They were on a search for evidence that could link Gemma to Deborah's murder. Obviously, they had enough circumstantial evidence, but they wanted physical evidence. Gemma's phone was found at the house, and it showed many, many texts between her and Deborah. And they were. They were good friends. But things did seem to get a little bit bitter towards the end. And they did have a major falling out. And they had a major falling out because of money. This is because Deborah offered her... £200,000 to go towards her housing renovations, which we know Gemma was just so desperate for. They were already in a bad financial situation because of the houseworks and the works were incomplete. I do wonder with this though, it, you know, Deborah's state of mind when she offered that £200,000, did she offer it or was she like coerced into giving it? Because I just, I honestly don't understand that from Gemma's point of view, being a friend and knowing about her mental state, why you would 
take the offer of £200,000. But obviously, Deborah retracted that. Deborah said, no, I'm not giving you this money. And I hope that's because Deborah told somebody else that she was giving Gemma this money. And they said, no, you do not do that. But Deborah's reasoning for not giving her the money was because that house was a bottomless pit. And she thought that Gemma would come back and ask for more and more and more, which Deborah didn't want. So Deborah nipped it in the bud and say, said, no, I'm not giving you that money. Also, in the search of Gemma's house, they came across her laptop and they found a will from Deborah, which was fake. It was forged. Gemma's signature was on there. Deborah's signature was on there, which did not match Deborah's actual signature. So basically, if Deborah did die, she'd leave everything to Gemma. Her estate, which was worth £750,000, would go straight to Gemma. Even though the police had all this damning circumstantial evidence, they had nothing that could tie Gemma to the murder. No physical evidence, anyway, that could tie Gemma to Deborah's murder. No DNA at Gemma's house of Deborah. No DNA at Deborah's house of her being murdered. It was like Deborah's DNA just didn't exist. This murder didn't happen. Of course, it, we know it did, but everything was just wiped clean. Gemma must have done such a bloody good job. During the search, they actually found the blue suitcase and it was found on Gemma's neighbour's roof. But because of the rain and the weather, it had pretty much washed this suitcase completely clean. In the front of the suitcase, they found an actual like bloody tea towel and it was, you know, in the front pockets of the suitcases, that is where it was found, stashed in there. Deborah's DNA was actually found on this tea towel, but because it was so degraded, they couldn't get a 100% match, which is so infuriating. In police custody, Gemma was still saying no comment. And I feel like Gemma at this point was pretty sure of herself that she was going to get away with, with Deborah's murder. But due to the overwhelming amount of circumstantial evidence against Gemma she was charged with the murder of Deborah. Trial for Gemma started on 24th of October 2022 at the Old Bailey in London and everyone was waiting to hear from Gemma whether she was at this point they didn't know whether she was going to take the stand and people you know as a journalist wanted her to take the stand everyone wanted to hear what Gemma's story was but Gemma opted not to take the stand and Hillary Gemma's mum said that was because she was advised by her legal team not to take the stand. But Gemma apparently did want to take the stand. But honestly, I just feel at this point, like, I can't take Hillary or Gemma, whatever they say, out of their mouths, I feel like is a lie. Even though we don't have answers to why Gemma chose to murder Deborah, we know that it was probably for financial gain. They were obviously in a bad financial situation and she wanted the house done. She wanted the house fixed. Hillary said that Gemma and her legal team were so sure that she was going to get off, off the murder charge that the legal team, apparently, this is from Hillary, said, go buy a bottle of champagne because you're going to be out of here tomorrow. And of course, that did not happen. When Gemma was in court, she actually appeared really relaxed and it was a, one of the journalists said that she almost had like a small smirk on her face which is just so disgusting like i said i feel like Gemma honestly thought that she was going to get away with this murder and also hillary was seen smiling waving at Gemma, and blowing her kisses which i honestly find so disgusting like conduct yourself woman you your child is being accused of murder whether you think she did it or not you have got relatives loved ones of the murder person there and you're blowing kisses honestly i think that's vile absolutely disgusting so disrespectful obviously the court heard about all the circumstantial evidence and that no murder weapon was found but it was said that deborah could have been killed by blunt force trauma because she had fractures to her skull which they think ultimately killed her this could have been done with a weapon or being pushed against a hard surface they also heard how deborah's you know, the head was found decapitated and that Gemma was more than qualified to dissect the human body. 
It also came to light that Gemma Mitchell had also made a false report via email to the missing persons charity and sent a WhatsApp message to Deborah's lodger saying that she was going to spend time with family for a year or so to clear her head somewhere close to the ocean. And one more thing that is super, super suspicious is the evening that, you know, Gemma was suspected to kill Deborah she had actually gone to St Thomas's Hospital in central London to be treated for a broken finger, what she said she trapped in a door, which we obviously very much doubt. It was obviously because Deborah put up a goddamn fight and broke your finger. That's the only reason. Gemma Mitchell became the first murderer and the first woman to be sentenced on television in England and Wales after the rulings were changed to allow cameras in the courtrooms. And after seven hours of deliberation, Gemma was found guilty of murder and dismemberment. Gemma is to serve a minimum, but this, this is a big, this is a big sentence here in the UK, of 34 years. Life here in the UK is, is half of that. No one rarely, rarely gets 34 years. So that means that Gemma will not be considered for parole or anything until the age of 72. And quite rightly so, she should literally spend the rest of her life in prison. She took advantage of an older woman for her money. Hilary, Gemma's mum, pleased to this day that she is innocent. She had nothing to do with Deborah's murder. And this is a story that Gemma gave Hilary. It's, yeah. Gemma told her mother that there was a really good offer on at this car hire company. So she thought she would take this author up, like you do. She then drove to Devon, where she had previously been with a friend, and she knew that the sunset there was just so, so lovely. So she wanted to do it again. So she hired this car that was on a bloody good offer to drive to Devon to see a sunset. Gemma apparently had plans to stay over the night, but because she got the best tire, she decided to drive home. And it was just really unfortunate that Deborah's body, you know, her friend, was found where Gemma had been. Totally not connected, because remember, Gemma's only gone down there to see a sunset. And it was just really bad luck that Deborah's body was found in the same place that Gemma was. You know, this is, her mum is actually believing this story. When Hilary was asked, well, what, why did Gemma have a really heavy suitcase when she was putting it in the car? She said, well, she had three bottles of those five litre water bottles and put them in a suitcase. So that's why it was so heavy to get in the, in the boot. Right, is it just me? Or if you're going on a long trip, you don't put your water in your suitcase in your boot. Because Gemma has never, ever spoken and her family have no answers of what actually happened to Deborah, what happened that day. Her sister, Amy Chong, said she suffers sleepless nights and she was shocked and saddened to hear what Deborah had gone through. And I think that's the main thing for the family is they don't know. What do you think, guys? Do you think she took advantage of Deborah? Do you think she knew exactly what she was doing? Me personally, I do. Like I said, I me personally, I don't feel like Deborah is was in the right mental state to make any financial discussions and Gemma should have known that. And I feel like she took advantage of Deborah and when she didn't get what she wants, she threw her toys at the pram and she killed her. But anyway, that is it for me today, guys. Have you heard about this case? What do you think about Gemma? What do you think about Deborah's family not getting any answers? I think it's really sad. So yeah, that is it for me today, guys, and I will see you again in next video. Bye.